Uh, okay, everybody will be starting the next presentation soon. I just wanted to remind you to uh, go and rate the presentations at our website, also tweet, blog, send telegrams about this event and stuff like that. And uh, please enter and exit the room quietly, uh, not to disturb uh, the speaker. And so uh, I think it's time to welcome our next presenter. I hope I pronounce his name right. It's Jan Pazziora, right? Yep. Correct. So give a warm welcome to Jan. Um, hello. For the past year and a half, I was trying to put things into containers in a sensible way. And being uh, from identity management team or with identity management group, uh, the things that I tried to put into containers included free IPA server, which is something like Active Directory for Linux, and the client parts, the system service uh, SSSD. And lately it was on Atomic, so I would like to share some experience with that journey. And uh, it will be both about Atomic and about SSSD, so uh, hopefully you'll find something interesting for maybe your endeavors uh, in putting things into containers. Uh, there are applications and there are system services, and for some reason that will become obvious later, I care about the distinction. So application is something that uh, that is the reason why you run all those computers, right? The, the web services or the GIMP or whatever. Um, and, and the system services is something that supports uh, that each particular host. So um, for applications, often you don't care on which host it's running, and we've seen many, uh, many presentations that showed how easy it is to set up containers that will take all your workload and move it over to a different country. Uh, for system services, you don't want uh, some orchestration layer to take all, from all your machines, to take all the caching, uh, caching name servers and move them to a idle machine, you know, so that you would have 50 of caching name servers on one machine and none left of the others. You, you, you want system services to stay on each particular host. So uh, examples might be, time synchronization, um, logging, authentication. Authentication is something that um, I was dealing with. So even if you take a minimal uh, Fedora cloud image, there will be some system services running there, right? Uh, network manager, uh, EH client. So typically, how, how do you get there? Well, you install the software, you tweak the configuration manually or using some tool. Um, you enable the service so that after reboot, you still have it running, and you start the service, and you are there. So um, you might use some, you, you, you tell me, no, you don't do it manually. You, you might use some configuration management system, uh, Puppet, whatever, uh, to do it. But eventually, underneath, they would do exactly, or in some way, these steps. So uh, SSSD uh, is a daemon that you might want to have on your machine if you want that machine to support external users, authentication of those external users, uh, host-based access control, sudo rules. So it, besides authentication, it enforces policies for access and other uh, purposes. So there's the daemon, and there's also a nice setup tool called IPA client install, uh, which sets things up for you. So let's try to do it. I have IPA server. I have uh, no hosts besides, besides the server there, right? Um, I have Fedora machine. This is not atomic, so I'm on normal Fedora machine. Um, and I would like to be able, because I have some users uh, in my external centralized identity management system. I would like Bob to be able to log into that machine, right? And if I now check if Bob is there, Bob is not there. Uh, apparently, uh, Bob was not so lucky to get into Etsy password, and uh, that's eventually correct. So I would like to IP enroll this machine. 
to, to, to be part of my free IPA domain. Uh, to do that, I need to authenticate to the free IPA server. I, I can do it using either credentials of some admin-like user, or I can pre-create the host record in free IPA server first and then use one-time password for the host. Which way would you like me to do it? So who wants to, sh to, to see admin's password? No one, so you all want me to, to go the uh, uh, one-time password route, right? So um, I create Fedora here. I click force because uh, we don't have it in DNS. I say set one-time password. I set the password to Yezhek. Uh, nothing has happened, but if I now go to Fedora and run IPA client, install password Yezhek, what should happen is um, it enrolls the machine. Wow, what happened here? Yes, and secure is good. So um, it configures certain many aspects of that operating system. And it should end with telling me that everything is fine. And how do I know that it's fine? Well, uh, suddenly the machine knows about Bob. So that's pretty cool. But we can check that as part of this setup, uh, the setup script has started and also enabled, I think, uh, SSSD daemon. So suddenly I'm able to log into the machine as Bob. So uh, I can do, and I can show you that. Uh, do, do you want me to, to authenticate using password or Kerberos? Password, someone? Kerberos, okay, yeah, you, you like Kerberos. So, um, Kinate Bob, uh, example test, secret password, and SSH Bob at Fedora, example test. Um, I'm in on that machine. Uh, it complains about missing host name, but you would be able to tweak that yourself. You know, uh, this is not authentication matter, right? And um, I can do sudo uh, bin id. And I can, as Bob, I can now run commands as root. Why? Because, uh, as I said, part of what FreeIPA can do for me is sudo rules. And I have already enabled that without authenticating, uh, I can run, uh, run command bin id. So with one setup command, I was able to basically pull my machine and make it part of externally managed domain. Yes, please. Thank you for the question. I, I hope that somebody would uh, ask that question. Um, I certainly hope not. So, and because it's a long uh, output and it might have been added to the middle, uh, we've checked that it was not. So, um, what we can check, and so if I uh, now stop SSSD, right? Uh, the SSSD is no longer running, and I run IDBob, what would you expect to happen? Well, you would expect Bob to, to be away, to go away, but that's not the case. And the reason is that SSSD, besides being a process, it also creates some fancy caches. And if I ask about Bob with disabling access through those memory caches, now I'm really uh, not finding things in somewhere like warlib SSS MC, I believe. This is where Bob was added. So it did not go, the, the, the Bob record did not go to Etsy password, it went here. And some libraries, NSS libraries, might still find Bob somewhere there, even if the daemon is not running. It will expire eventually. So, um, okay. That was setting up system service on a normal machine. Um, enter Atomic. 
Atomic is minimal. One size fits all, you get that OS3 image, and it's read only. So let's check Atomic. Because we would like to be able to do the same for Atomic, right? Uh, because we saw that it is, it is pretty cool. So I log into Atomic. Um, the problem is that while I can create files in Etsy and var, uh, the rest of the system is read only. So even if it is based on RPMs, I cannot install uh, SSSD there because I don't have any YAM or DNF. You are not supposed to install additional software to Atomic. Uh, the provider of that distribution of that image made a selection of tools that are essential. Atomic platform is somehow meant to run containers. So if you want something which is not even an application, it's not your web application, it's not your uh, eShop, it is just SSSD, you would like Bob just to be able to log into this machine, right? Uh, you cannot do that using normal tool, tools that, you're, uh, that you are used to. So um, how can we get that system service there? Anybody? Uh, install the service in a container, right. So we want a container which would somehow be running and providing uh, the operation or functionality of the service. So uh, you create a container from a Docker file, right? You install some packages. You run the container. Now, what, what do you run in that container? Because we saw when we, when we looked at that non-atomic machine that uh, there was that pretty crucial part of setting things up, of somehow IPA enrolling the machine, for example. Um, and also, um, with system services, uh, many locations, many files, directories might get set up and modified and expected by other parts of the system. Uh, Let's take a step back a little bit. This is a typical contain containerized application setup, the way you would expect, it to, expect to run it in OpenShift or Kubernetes. You have your database, you have your application, you have some front-end uh, uh, HTTP proxy or whatever. They might be all high availability, high availability balanced, and they are connected through TCP links, essentially you probably want that database data to be stored on a host somewhere, so there might be some volume, so-called bind mounted into the container, but there would be one or few of those bind mounts per each container. Typical system service, but it might have dozens of files that it cares about. And you, you want that files to be stored not in the container, and you, you, you need those files to be readable by other, other services. If that IPA client install changed PAM configuration in etcpam.d, you know, SSH, SSH should be able to find it there. So if you were to run a container with system service that includes SSSD, you would have quite a lot of uh, bind mounts to, to specify. Uh, no one can do that right every time. Uh, so, what can we do? Well, um, the Docker images now support so-called labels. So you can specify a run label, and in that run label you can defined mapping of all those dozens of volumes that your system service might need. So that's the first example. We have a long list of dash V, and the dash V is take this from the host and make it available uh, on this particular location uh, in the service. And you will notice that 
the mapping is basically one one to one. Well, we ex we expect we we don't do not uh, we don't do anything fancy. We don't change the host names. We want our Kerberos GitHub to land exactly in the same same place in the container. Um, so that'd be that'd be good. But the, the problem is, if we run this container, uh, many of those files would not exist. We still want to enroll the machine using that container, right? So uh, the good news is um, you can specify more than one type of labels. You can specify uh, install label. And yeah, I skipped even better news. And even better news is that there's a tool called Atomic, which can understand these labels. So if I define a run label, which specifies a long list of parameters to Docker run, uh, I can use atomic run to basically execute exactly this uh, command, and it will do some environment variable like uh, replacements uh, on the way. And I can do the same for, for the install uh, phase or setup. On top of that, if I run atomic install, the name of the image, and additional parameters, they'll get passed to that container, uh, to that docker run uh, command. So now the question is, can we actually run IPA client install in the container while being able to pass parameters to it? Can we? Yes, we can. So I'll show you so that you're excited that it works, but then we'll talk about the details a little bit. Uh, so this is the atomic thing, right? Let's see Fedora. Yeah, well, it, it's atomic because this is read only. Uh, Fedora release stays the same. So I can do, I can pre-create the host here. Where's my identity, where's my host? Or would you like to see admin's password? No, you, you don't, okay. So I have Atomic here. Admin's password is pretty secret. So I use different one-time password here. They must match, so, so this is good. And now we do Atomic install Fedora SSSD Password, Kirtek. Let's see what happens. It runs some Docker command. Um, it passes, let me scroll up a little bit. We'll wait until it finishes so that it doesn't move under my hands. We pass it dash V and we say, just take the whole route and make it available in the container as slash host. And that's not something mandated by Atomic or something. That's just that the clever guys said that it would be nice if you did it this way because it's easier for everyone. So we were able to run a IPA client install, the setup tool, in the container. And we landed back, we are not in a container, we landed back on the atomic host, and we can see that our SSSD conf was created, configured. So you would expect IDBob to return Bob, right? Who would expect IDBob to return Bob? Yeah, okay, so let's try it, IDBob. Now, what could be the problem? It's not running, exactly because we need to run it, and we have two ways to do it. The atomic way, which I want to use, and the system day way. And what is probably happening? Well, I'm probably ha running the, that atomic run using uh, in, in the start script of that service, 
So now I have Bob. And if we check the processes, uh, let's see, there'll be Docker daemon running here. And as children, and I did not exec, if you were to one of those previous presentations, I did not exec, I'm just sleeping and looping in there for some reasons. But the, the fact is that SSSD is now running in the container, and it has bind, bind mounted all those files. So uh, would you like me to, to try uh, logging into to that atomic machine? Yes, you would. <laughs> Can it? We do it as Alice this time. So SSH Alice at atomic example test. And we kind of expect, um, I have multiple VMs running there, so it's a little bit slow, but eventually we would expect uh, Alice to be there on that atomic machine, right? So that's pretty cool. We, we, we were able to add a system service uh, to atomic machine, which did not allow us to install any software. And it provides service to things like SSH, to PAM, and you know, other components of the system. Um, feel free to ask any question at any time if you get lost. Yes. Why not upgrade the software to not use those Zelio OI launchers? Also, like access things from one side. I believe that what you are hitting. Well, yep. Yeah, uh, the question is, why do we have so many locations for the configuration and caches and data, and not have it in one location? And I believe that what you are hitting is reality. This is how things were set up uh, in the past for ages, and Atomic is using the normal RPMs that are in Fedora or CentOS or Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So uh, it would be a nice project, and uh, it would be a long project. So uh, even if we could do that project, uh, if we want Alice to be able to log into Atomic today, uh, Unfortunately, we cannot rely on that. And of course, Alice can do sudo uh, bin id, and, and uh, she cannot run date. Just, just to show you that it's just the sudo that, that is enabled, right? So what did we do in that install phase? So the, the important thing here is that uh, the definition of the runtime and definition of the uh, install time is in a Docker file. So it comes with, uh, with that container. And we have essentially what I have shown in, in the slides uh, in the definition. So, uh, in that install, we want to be able to run that setup tool, right? And that setup tool needs to be run in that container, in the context of that container. Uh, but there might be some existing configuration on the host that is different than from the container. I don't know, NSS, nsswitch.conf might be different. We don't want our container to override that configuration. So what we do, we first copy interesting locations, interesting files and directories from the host to the container, then run the setup tool, then copy things out, and we restore con just to you know, make things really nice. The real install SH, uh, uh, SH is a little bit more complex and it supports, uh, for example, joining to Active Directory using Realm, Realm D, and, and so on. So, but the, in a sense, 
we want to create environment in the container that is similar to what we have on the host, or that matches that what, what, what is on a host, we might need eventually, in some cases, for other services, maybe to merge the configuration. That's what your install script would need to do. Then we run the setup script, and then, then, then we copy the resulting configuration and the data out. One of the nice things is that essentially this is uh, well, a part that, uh, that copying it out to host uh, takes some time. This is an atomic operation. So only once the whole IPA client install has finished successfully, and we have a new configuration that we want deployed on the host, we, we do the, co the, the copying out. Um, now, I've shown to you that after running atomic install, I have SSSD service. And how do we define a SSSD service? Well, we use that user lib uh, systemd something, which is read only, so we cannot create, define that service. Luckily, we can use Etsy. So we create a service, and now things get a little bit tricky, because when you run, doc, when you run Docker on, it is just a client which talks to that uh, Docker daemon, which is running there. And the Docker daemon eventually starts uh, the processes in a container. Con container is just change root, uh, maybe with some more fancy features. But um, So we need to define uh, the service possibly as one shot. We want just to run uh, the start and or run the run. Uh, run the container and uh, assume that it did not fail and assume that uh, it is still running. Uh, we heard that uh, some work is being done in notification business. So eventually this might get a little bit more complex and we would have better control over what the status of that service, of that container is. But in general, uh, we can make that container behave as normal uh, system service. Uh, issues. Um, I mentioned one, how do we know that the service is still running? Another issue is um, we want for the processes in the container to be able to access those files and directories on the host. And to do that, we probably need to make it run as privileged which is running in a SPC underscore T uh, as Linux type. And we probably need to add some as Linux rules, for example, for Dbus to be able to talk to processes like this. It might have been nicer if we could say uh, we want to run all the processes in this container as SSSD underscore T, which is how they run uh, on normal system except uh, the transition from the Docker to that uh, particular Linux type uh, is not permitted. So, so far we are running privilege. I don't like it that much, but that's the best we, we get. Uh, restart is another issue. Do we want to rely on Docker? Do we want to rely on, on uh, systemd? Uh, both, uh, bo both have their own problems, because if you rely on Docker and you disable that service and you reboot the machine but don't stop, uh, Docker will uh, bring your container up uh, after reboot. So that's probably not what you want. Uh, another problem that we have, SSSD and, and the whole IPN client uh, suite comes with, for example, SSS cache command line tool. We would like to be able to make that command line tool available to admin on the host, right? And we can easily run that command, like make that command run docker exec and basically run the same command in the container. Now, the problem is where do we store that utility? User is read-only. User local bin, that would be a natural place, is read-only. Uh, I looked at making postfix system service, which would just take the local uh, email and 
send it over to wherever you want it sent, uh, make it uh, run in container on Atomic. And you have userly send mail, right? The typical uh, interface, which is already on Fedora, a symlink to Etsy alternatives, except it's not installed on Atomic. So do we want to create a bunch of uh, symlinks from user to Etsy so that the containers could uh, tweak it once they are installed? Maybe. And another problem is uh, that container is not exactly small because it can do not just that runtime, SSSD is running and is resolving users and groups and so on, but it includes those setup tools. So even after that install phase, even after the configuration phase, we still have those setup tools there. So um, maybe we want different container for uh, running and different one for setting it up. Now, um, that Atomic tool is primarily promoted as a way to upgrade that OS3 on Atomic, right? So we've seen presentation about that. But to me, much more important, a nice feature about it, is that it can understand the definitions of running the container. And those definitions are stored in the same image that you try to run. So you, you don't need to have another layer, another wrapper, another uh, service definition. It, it comes in that image. It's pretty cool. So um, the feature is not limited to, to Atomic. Let's see. Uh, I come back to, to the Fedora machine, that non-Atomic machine, root at Fedora. Example test, touch user A. So it's, you know, it's the non-atomic one. Uh, where are we? We don't have system D running, but we have it configured. And when I say system D, just imagine your own service that you might want to run in atomic. Don't get hooked up on uh, SSSD. Um, so if I do atomic install, Fedora SSSD, and I have a special migrate option there. What should happen? Yeah, we don't have Docker running. System, start Docker. Okay, now we have Docker. We run the same uh, system, uh, system setup install uh, script. And it says, well, and that option is somehow coded in such a way that it just says, well, okay, you are trying to set up a containerized system, the application. Uh, the setup is already there. We will, status SSSD, we'll enable ourselves in Etsy system D. And now when I do system CTL start SSSD, uh, I might be cheating because uh, the original system D on the host might have started, right? But we'll check if that's the case. And no, it is running in, in the Docker. And it's providing the services. I can remove SSSD, who, who does not trust me so that I can, I can remove that SSSD RPM, but yeah, you trust me. So the nice thing about the Atomic tool, again, is that finally we have a way to actually say, not just install this software, install the so software, define uh, external port, but, but we also have a way to say, on a typical system, this would be run like this and especially the bind mounts and, and the mappings of the files uh, are there. When you want to develop a system service for Atomic, it's not that easy. You don't have Git there, and you cannot install Git there, so you need to use another container, and, and it's, it gets so long that you rather take your normal non-Atomic system, you create a container there, you can debug it there, and then, of course, you verify that it still works on Atomic, but, uh, so 
I'm getting back to Atomic as the tool is pretty useful if you want to do something about system services and not just um, in system services in containers and not just on Atomic platform. Now, you might want to do that, I don't know, to try newer version of SSSD. You just take that existing configuration, you create image, maybe completely different uh, operating system, Fedora on, on RHEL or on Fedora, whatever, and you just start uh, the daemon and you can verify whether your Kerberos and host base access control still work. It gets me to conclusion, but before conclusions, do you have any questions? Okay, you might come to questions during conclusions. Conclusions are labels, are nice. Use them, use Atomic Tool, and take advantage of being able to separate the setup, which can have access to the whole uh, host uh, root file system from runtime, where we only make available certain locations and some of them read only. Moreover, as a result of this effort, we now have, and these images that I were showing, they are available on, on GitHub. So we now have SSSD service for Atomic Platform, and you can, you can use it. It will be a little bit big. On the other hand, if you have another container there with the same uh, basic Fedora, at, the, at least that space will be shared. I have a bunch of links, and I'll welcome your feedback, both here and on my email and elsewhere. Yes, please. How did I figure out the list of bind mounts that uh, had to be bind mounted? Uh, Docker diff is a nice thing, because if you start Docker container and run IPA client install, and you don't bind mount anything, you can run Docker diff on the host, and it will tell you what files have changed. So it gives you the initial list, of course, Different parameters to that IPA client install to that setup tool might lead to different configurations to be modified. So uh, it's ideal if you know the, the software. But unless you're, you, uh, unless you're putting Postgres, everyone knows that uh, that thing has data in viral APG data. Uh, and especially with system services, chances are that you, there will be multiple locations. Man pages, Docker diff, uh, asking uh, authors, or just general experience might help you. It was an iterative process. Other question? The uh, running SSSD client in the container, does, uh, since everything is bind mounted in, does that container have any changes at all, or could that whole thing be read only? Uh, since everything that the container should possibly care about is bind mounted. Uh, could the whole container be made uh, read only? Docker div SSSD. Um, yes. Even if some of the files um, get modified. So I take advantage of not being forced to have it read only. I would have loved to be forced because that would lead us to, to the necessity of basically resolving how do we want to deal with these things. Because I, I, might, I would probably need to use that new TMFFS to bind mount those locations as well, but then, yeah, possibly, to, to let the container do a bogus changes in places that I don't care about. Yes? Uh, I believe that if you just download, if there's a new uh, image and it gets to your host, it gets started, uh, the next time the Docker run might actually fail because it tells you that there's a newer version and uh, 
the old container using the, the old image is still around. We might need, and that's another thing that I might want to put into a list of issues, we might need a way to distinguish stopping the container and killing it altogether. If you uh, remember how I had the service defined uh, over here, instead of running atomic stop and atomic stop running docker stop, we might want to change that to run docker rm and just delete it so that we don't have a container laying around. Another way would be to have some way to um, but how do I know that I should run it? Uh, Dan says atomic update should help, but uh, I might want, I might need a way to, that, that will tell me there's a new one and you want to run atomic update. How do you know you need to do yum update? Uh, well, yum update is a manual thing that was done. Uh, this one is somebody got me a new version to, to my machine. Uh, uh, so, to, b back to your question, uh, it should just work unless it doesn't. <laughs> I'm out of time, uh, I'll be outside, thank you. I need to. I, I need to. Mike McGrath, I don't know if you. Yeah.